Welcome to my channel, Ken here. Today let's take a look at my computer setup and the computer itself. Let's go! Let's take a look at a metal setup, a simple guitar, bass, drum setup and some strings. Here we're sitting in front of my project and um, Basically, this is a rock project. I think I'm, I'm using this as an example. This is one of the uh, background tracks that I used for previous videos. A couple of guitars, a uh, few guitars, I should say, a bass and drums and some orchestral strings. I'll play you the track first. So here. Yeah. So basically I'm in Nuendo 11 and uh, the audio interface is a Lynx Aurora N and uh, this is a hybrid setup. I, I made another video, I'll put the link in the description below about that video with the hardware but here's the computer setup. So the hardware and the software and a couple of slaves have to be all timed in with this Nuendo project as I'm bouncing. Uh, around in different kinds of uh, projects but th this is super simple compared to a lot of other projects I do but it's a good example. The basic setup for, for the whole studio is, is done in here and uh, you know the inputs, outputs, uh, the external effects and so forth and so on. Now um, the output here you can see it's not connected here that's because I'm using something called control room over here where it's connected and it's connected via digital out to my key speakers digitally and um, so they are running their own uh, DSP on those but I'm running a lot of analog gear here that you can see is, is connected you know to a port like let's say this hammer here uh, is, is on 15 and 16 uh, on the send and 15 16 return so it essentially works like a plug-in in the mix. I can show you that. If I wanted the hammer, let me just make sure the hammer is not being used. You can only use it once if you're on analog. This is the group tracks or the stems on the right side over here. On the left side it's basically bus tracks. Let's say here there's numerous of them for well, actually three of them here for the snare for this particular track and cymbals and this high drum. I usually paint them red but I forgot that one. You can see here, so the, here's the G14. Uh, it's grayed out, that means I'm not using it. I just keep it here to, to AB various things. So you can see this is a, the way it works when, when you have hardware connected to it and it, it would be just like a plug-in. You plug it in to a track and, and that's the way that works. And of course I'm using regular uh, plug-ins like an EQ here just to cut low in on the rhythm guitar to get some of that useless energy out of the track to make it more clear. And some of these tracks uh, like this Better Maker right here is essentially a hardware unit that has to be connected like the, all the other hardware but it's controlled by software so I can control it here. I'll bypass, I'll bypass it. So it just gives a little bit more oomph and a little more air on top. This compressor right here is by Mac DSP, which is basically a hardware unit that sits outside the computer. This is connected via Thunderbolt and you control it via software like a plug-in. Otherwise it behaves like analog equipment um, and, and of course you have the same limitations that you can't just keep endless amounts of, of plug-ins of the same thing. 
this is my main make saw and uh, on this make saw I just see all the returns from the samplers, the audio tracks and the input tracks over here and you know I separated the drum kit over here. Sometimes I'll, I'll use these strings for example right here as opposed to, to, to the drum kit here. This drum kit is, is directly into the project because I find it more convenient to edit and stuff instead of having it over on slave as opposed to the strings that are as you can see connected via Vienna on the other slave on one of the slave computers uh, because it's pretty static and you control all this with CC's uh, CC1, CC11 and so forth and so on. So the drums and the strings together and the bass is also in this particular project is connected inside the, uh, the project. And of course the guitar tracks are all audio tracks. Here. So you can hear there's a chorus on this and, and the chorus will be on the stem. It's a UAD emulation of, of the Brigade. There's a lead here, so I'll just loop the lead. So the way this lead is, it's coming from the audio track and then I'll route it through the axe effects here that's connected inside the again it's in here right there so that's on channel 31 which is one of the digital channels and that uh, then I control it through the the XFX software here um, how I want it to sound So essentially, it runs from the from the output to the stem. Now I have a, a three monitors in my studio, and one of them this is my main monitor. We're actually having a screen capture of, but I have another monitor I use for meters and film and stuff, and I have another monitor that's a touchscreen. The output of this goes out to what they call control room in this program here and so I can also control the le click level and, and other things so it doesn't affect the bounce when I, when I mix down. I use Sonarworks here for room connect correction and, uh, and over here we have all the connections but I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit later in this video. So that's essentially a rock project. I mean sometimes over here you can see I have guitars quad tracked here. I think this is um, the Mesa Boogie Mark V amplifier, by the way. Let's take a look at my orchestral setup. Here we go. I'm sitting here in front of my orchestral template now. We're only seeing the, the actual used tracks right now in the project, although I have some stuff here that's not, that have been muted. Um, so strings on brown, keyboards and harps on black, percussion in red, yellow is brass and up here on top is the woods. So this is a straight up orchestral uh, project. I'll play a little bit of it.
So basically, um, uh, most of this is connected to my slaves over here. As you can, there are lots and lots of samples on the slaves here. And uh, you see this one highlighted? That's because the track is highlighted. If I, if I highlight the strings, it'll be this one over here. So right now I'm using the modern scoring strings. And the modern scoring brass here, the percussion is a superior drummer, and I think the keyboard is from Vienna, and the woods are from Vienna up here too, uh, and or and or from Berlin winds. So it's a mishmash of stuff that has to work together, and uh, whatever the musical piece would be, that's how you have to find the best sample to represent your idea or, or whatever it is that you're doing. So you can see there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of return tracks here. And if I showed all tracks, I have a key command for that here. Um, here is the entire orchestral template. Um, you can't work without a template with orchestral because there's just so much. And you can see it's, these things are huge. You know, you kind of just, I just, have a command for just to show what I'm actually working on here. Uh, I'm zoom in a little bit here, and uh, basically, this is not a very complex project, um, but it's just a cue, and you can see over here. So, so it's, the trick is with orchestral is to get them to to play together and, and in the same room. Now. Uh, that has a lot to do with uh, reverbs, so there's lots and lots of little reverbs just to place instruments in the room. And I use a Bricasti over here um, for uh, just the, the final mix down with all the instruments. Now, if I have to deliver stems, it gets a little trickier because you know you can't do that trick. So I have these lexicon reverbs on each stem so these represents each stem so in this case i just have a string sum but sometimes they request a high and a low string or short long string or whatever depending on the project and the middle section here are actually the stems um, over here is just submixes mixes um, on groups um, if they need some special like for example you can see there's a placement reverb here to get them to play the clarinets with the rest of the woodwinds. Right now I just have a mastering channel here. Um, sometimes I'll mix it down and master afterwards and sometimes I'll just master on here. It really depends on what the purpose is with the project. When it comes to a orchestral, the, the samples themselves are static. You don't really, you, you just load them up once and for all, like and leave them there, and then you control them through your DAW. Uh, in this case, this particular thing is, is obviously short notes, and if you take one of the notes here, I can, you can see I have a, an expression map here, so I can, instead of using key commands, I can just say, okay, what, what uh, articulation do I want to use, and it's set up for each library, so I can just very quickly either dial through the different, let's say, legatos or, or short notes to find the right one, or I have a specific idea of how it's going to sound, and, and I just put, put the expression map on that. Instead of just loading up that one patch you need, I, I just everything is just loaded up, uh, all the patches. It gets a little unruly, so it's, it's hyper important that, that uh, you can control all this. now. With all this going on, I use something called Sherlock. 
and I'll pull it up on the other screen. I have it on the touch screen, so I don't have to use the mouse for it. But basically, this this right here is my composition pane. <coughs> Excuse me. It in, in it essentially does, you know, like quick keys and and stuff like that to to just do basic functions that you do all the time. And there's an orchestral here. This is just to call up the let's say I just want to see brass uh, so you can see over here to the left that's it's only showing brass now if it's one if I want a specific library let's say the ones I'm using right now which is you know I used to they used to be called Los Angeles scoring strings now they're called modern scoring strings but changing these templates just for a name is just too cumbersome so it's still called last but you can see I can just call up whatever I need, like here's the, the brass I'm using in the project. And um, and I want to show all tracks here. As opposed to a, 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 like a band based and, and a uh, rock track or, or, or just synths and stuff, it puts different demands on the computers and, and on the process. So trying to find a one way of working throughout all this is a little difficult but um, as far as I'm concerned it's all about speed efficiency and maximum uh, sound quality maximum realism when it comes to orchestral samples and um, and stuff like that it's 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 very important uh, and that's really where the gold is here and, and when you do this much MIDI uh, you just have to be rock solid and can't be crashing on you all the time and so a lot of effort goes into this setting these things up thanks for watching please subscribe hit the bell button share and all that YouTube stuff until next time take care